Good afternoon, this is The Ugly Truth. It is Saturday, July the 2nd, 2011, and I'm here for an impromptu protest at the Greek Consulate here in Toronto at 365 Bloor Avenue East. Basically what's happened is the Greek uh, government, uh, military and coast guard have uh, illegally prevented 10 uh, ships, which are part of the Freedom Flotilla 2, uh, from leaving their dock sides. No uh, legitimate reason has been given as of yet as to why they're being detained or prevented from leaving their docks or their ports. Uh, international law basically states that any country can refuse entry into their port. They cannot refuse anyone from leaving their port. There are being demonstrations uh, organized all over Canada in every major city where there is a Greek consulate to protest against the Greek government. Uh, speculation is that the Israeli government, as well as the United States and possibly a Canadian government are putting political and economic pressure against the Greek government. You know, in a time when Greece's economy is falling apart and there's civil unrest in the streets, you would think their government would have better things to do than detain ships bound for Israel or Gaza, which have uh, nothing to do with them, which is frankly none of their business. So it's obvious uh, there's another hand uh, at work here commanding the Greek government and uh, forcing them to cause these illegal actions. So I'm here as the ugly truth to once again to cover this event and to stand in solidarity with the oppressed. Lies, the oppression, and the tyranny must end. against Israeli apartheid, Kaya. So great to see everybody here today. We're going to start just to uh, make sure we've got the latest up-to-date news. Um, I'd like to invite Ali Malak to uh, come up and join us from the Canadian Boy to, uh, Boat to uh, Gaza Organizing Committee. Thank you, and thank you, brothers and sisters. And I'm sure our brothers and sisters in Greece right now will highly appreciate your message of solidarity and standing up for social justice against oppression and occupation. Brothers and sisters in Greece, they are make up a true reflection of the Canadian society. We have leaders from the Aboriginal people, we have a Christian, we have Jews, we have Muslims, we have believers and non-believers. They come together to stay, to say, break the blockage against Gaza and its people. We know the Canadian government shamelessly supports the state of Israel, a state of aggression and oppression and occupation. You know they tried to arrest Sister Sandra Rush, one of the organizers of the group, but they failed. Now they, we have a new, they have arrested the captain of the American boat, Audacity of Hope, and they tried to escort it to the shore. And anytime visit our boat website, tahrir.ca, and you'll get the latest news. Thank you, solidarity forever. Israel, Israel, you shall see. Palestine will be free. Israel, Israel, you shall see. Palestine will be free. We've got uh, Khaled Mumar from the Canadian Arab Federation, President of the Canadian Arab Federation. Brothers and sisters, today as Canadians, 
we are embarrassed by two governments, the Canadian government and the Greek government. The Canadian government because they are not willing to protect Canadians to travel freely on the high seas. And the Greek government because they are going against the trend of the Greek people. The Greek people have always supported the Palestinian people and their cause. They've done that through the decades. And so we know that the Greek people are with us. And uh, we tell them, do not be embarrassed, because we know this government does not represent you. A government that's supposed to, uh, to uh, be the birthplace of democracy is now is now infringing on the free movement of Canadians and on the free expressions of Canadians, and that's a shame. Shame! shame. The flotilla knew that they were going to face problems, and in the end, even if they do not reach Gaza, they have achieved their objective. Their objective is to raise awareness about the immoral and illegal siege of Gaza imposed on 1.6 million Palestinian civilians, two-thirds of whom are refugees. Half of them are children under the age of 16 suffering from malnutrition, a lack of food and medical supplies. And I'd like to invite um, Tim McCaskill from Queers Against Israeli Apartheid, Quaya. Check, oh, I thought that was a quiet t-shirt. It, it is. Excellent quiet t-shirt on Tim to say a few words. Thanks, Tim. Thanks very much, thank you. Uh, yeah, it is Pride Day, uh, Pride Week, and so many of us have been very busy, and you'll be happy to know that the Dyke Mark just happened, and I think one of the largest contingents was Dykes and Trans People for Palestine. Woo! So our voices have not been silenced in any way. Um, I think uh, people in Kwaya are especially concerned with what's going on around the flotilla because one of our members is waiting on the uh, Canadian boat. And so, of course, we're concerned about what's happening there. Uh, I wanted to bring a brief message to, uh, to tell people that uh, the gay community has been a special focus of the Israeli government's attempt to pinkwash, to hide its uh, oppression of the Palestinians under the guise of it being a democratic, modern, progressive state, i.e. it treats queers well. And there are many, many of us in the queer community who say we will not allow our bodies and our movement to be used for this kind of an argument. We stand in solidarity with the flotilla, and queers stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Thank you very much. In Jewish Voices, also uh, IJV, we've got Corey Balsam. When I say free, you say Palestine free. Palestine free. Palestine. Palestine. I myself am not actually in that good of a mood. Just as we expected the Canadian boat to set sail to Gaza from Greece, just as we hoped that the people of Gaza might receive some much needed medical equipment and humanitarian aid, from the hands of peace activists the world over, including one member of Independent Jewish Voices, Dylan Penner, and other members of our community here. We find out that Greece is preventing them from setting sail. How ironic is it that the so-called birthplace of democracy is now preventing what American writer and delegate on the U.S. boat to Gaza, Alice Walker, has called the freedom ride of this era. Now, if there's one thing that we know and that we can be certain about, it's that Greece is not acting wholly on its own volition here. Just as Greece has succumbed to international pressures from the IMF, to pass austerity measures against the interests of its own people, so too has Greece unfortunately succumbed to international pressure by preventing the flotilla from setting sail. On behalf of Independent Jewish Voices Canada, I want to send a strong message to the Greek government. Let our people go. Let our people go. Boycott, divest, sanction until Israel complies with all violations of international law until all Palestinians are free. That means right of return for all Palestinian refugees. That means end the occupation, return the land in West Bank and Gaza. Equality for all Palestinians and citizens in living in Israel.
Israel. Suzanne Weiss is going to say a few words from Jews opposed to Zionism, not in our name, who we also know as Nyon. Suzanne. Okay, the government of Greece has forbidden the flotilla too, including the Canadian boat, from sailing to Gaza. What is so frightening about our boat? It's just a little boat, a brave little boat. And all it wants to do is sail to Gaza, carrying our message of love and solidarity to the people there. Its message is, is expressed by the name Tariya, liberation. That message is what Israel and its allies in the Canadian government finds so threatening. So our little boat sits barricaded in a Greek port barred from sailing by government order. Its sister boat, the Audacity of Hope, made its escape, but it was chased down and captured by the Greek Coast Guard. Two other boats were disabled by sabotage. All this piracy was not done alone by the Israeli government. Harper and Obama rushed to Netanyahu's aid. The Greek government is bankrupt. It was pressured by the rich countries like Canada for which it seeks a handout. Why? Why is Stephen Harper so committed to maintaining the siege of Gaza? He's a fascist. Harper is notorious in Canada as a builder of super prisons. And now he defends the biggest prison of them all, which is illegally confining almost two million citizens of Gaza. And what is their crime? They are denied the right to travel, the right to trade, the right to live in peace and free from Israel's murderous invasions and bombardments, the right to rebuild their devastated communities. Today, we demand that the government of Greece release the flotilla ships and enable them to set sail. Together, we can break the siege. Free, free Gaza! Free, free Gaza! We're starting to get connection with um, Sandra Roosh on board the Canadian boat to Gaza. I'm going to see if we can hook this up. Just give us a second. They're now living on the boat. They're, de they're detaining us on some very uh, trumped up little things. Except they say we need to fix, but all those things don't even exist. But basically, the Greek government sent a ruling to all the uh, port authorities and all the captains saying that no boats that are heading for Gaza can go, no matter what their flag, whether it's Greek or international. So we have a lot of hope, a lot of enthusiasm. You know, it's the Canadians, the Australians. Belgian, Danish, German, and Turk. We're all together. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. That was Sandra Roosh from the Canadian Boat to Gaza. Uh, Canadian Boat to Gaza. Um, I'd like to invite um, Karen Brothers to come up from the United Church. Hi, it should be Brian McIntosh speaking for the United Church who's here, not me, because I'm not employed by the United Church. But um, the United Church has been absolutely wonderful. We have a wonderful crowd here, Sandra, that we'd like all of you delegates to know uh, is so supportive of you. We have this on a loudspeaker in the middle of the, the, um, the uh, Greek consulate. And uh, we're all 100% behind you and praying for your safety and for your success. And uh, our, our prayers are all with you. Thanks, Karen.
Zahir from Palestine House. Zibrahim here. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, address this uh, great crowd here on a short notice. See what we've done here. If the people in Ottawa do not see this, shame on them. Shame, shame on them. Uh, I don't know what can I add to the uh, eloquent uh, speakers who uh, went ahead of me. I'll just remind the, uh, uh, the decision makers in Tel Aviv to read the history. South Africa, they jailed Nelson Mandela. In the Israeli jails now, there is 10,000 Nelson Mandela's, Palestinian Nelson Mandela's. Yeah. One day, these people will be out and they will be free. Palestine. Or oh, well, free, free Palestine. Free, free, free Palestine. Palestine. Free, Thank, you. Free. Thank you. Thank you. Can I uh, get uh, Miguel Figuera from the Communist Party to come up and say a couple of words? Thank the you. Communist Party is both pleased and honored to stand with all of you here today, all of the people across this country, and indeed around the world, to express their solidarity with the struggle of the Palestinian people for their emancipation, for the end of the occupation, and for their right to their homeland. And in condemning both the Greek government and all of the imperialist powers, including our own government in Canada, in Ottawa, for their collusion of support in continuing to perpetrate this crime, that if there is one outstanding, long, longest standing crime against humanity, it has been the treatment of the Palestinian people by the Zionist State of Israel, going right back to 1948. What goes around comes around. Palestine will be free. The flotilla will be free. From Afghanistan to Palestine, occupation is a crime. Lift the siege of Gaza, free the Palestinian people, Palestine will be free. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got James Clark to say a few words in solidarity from the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War. I can speak today on behalf of the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War, which represents about 70 to 80 labor, faith, student organizations right across the GTA. But I can also bring greetings of solidarity from the Canadian Peace Alliance. There are demonstrations like this happening right across the country, and in fact, all around the world, people have mobilized on incredibly short notice to stand up for Palestine. Everywhere, people are saying that we want to stand with Palestine. And in the course of this struggle, a giant spotlight has been shining on Israel and the lengths that it will go to to enforce this blockade. And not just enforce this blockade, but expand it right across the Mediterranean. What's next? There will be no boats that can travel through the Mediterranean because some of them might try to go to Gaza to break that siege. The people might want to show solidarity with the people of Palestine and with Gaza. And if we continue to mobilize and to build the struggle the way we have, we see more demonstrations like this happening right across the country and all, the, all around the world. I'm confident that we will break the blockade of Gaza and that Palestine will be free. Governor McGowan is going to read to us uh, a poem that you wrote, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, the song that was playing earlier, I got inspired by Long Live Palestine and I wrote this. So here it goes. Now if I speak against Zionism, I'll be labeled an anti-Semitic. But if this was about my newly cooped diamonds, now that would be charismatic. You see, the problem is that we're trained to become ignorant to the truth. Because who wants to empathize for Palestinians just to sit and root? The media portrays the story they're paid to show, but, they're, but I don't fear them, so their cover I'm about to blow. There's a lot we aren't aware of, or captive from the reality. Since we, if we were aware of such brutality, not much can be done about this fatality. The reasons for its existence is due to duality. So now you wonder about the condition of Palestine. The reasons for its extinction are the monophakines. To make it hard, they make it hard for us to rise above our sheen. It's an old plan that's now in action, so it seems a bit foreseen. They sat and planned this destruction in a room just so they could slowly see
see us reach doom. If we don't rise above torments, it will be soon. Since 1946, we see this land disappearing. Mortality been on a rise, it's like we lost our hearing. It's like we don't hear, see, or feel their pain. We don't think we can help them sustain. You have to think much deeper about their schemes because nothing is really as it seems, such as the situation of the Gaza Strip or their plans on inserting microchips. Just so they could be more in control, our existence in this world already has us enrolled. To be a part of their game, the more we deny, the more they gain. The bitter tr truth takes over you, makes you insane. But I'd rather be fed truth than lies because my ignorance helps them multiply. They then continue on with their atrocious demeanors, though they're never charged for their misdemeanors. How come all this injustice only applies to us? How come no legislatures come, about of, come out about this fuss? How come we're imprisoned if we raise our voice? How come no one hears our painful, needy noise? I'm screaming at the top of my lungs for justice, although the people standing next to me are saying, fuck this. So how is that I bring change when I can't make a difference? People are so uncaring, not up for any resistance. And, if, and why, that is why humanity is so non-existent, and why people are so apart and indifferent. If you'd like freedom, then you'd have to join in and give assistance. Thank you. Sue Goldstein's going to say a word or two. I know what you have. I'm a little sore right now, and I've been a little late, but uh, apparently Giorgio Mamaliti was filming choir because, well, not choir, but filming dykes and trans people for Palestine, because any word of Palestine in the parade or any march, he sees as an excuse to cut funding to pride. So don't believe the hype. They want us there. It's political. It's always been political. And we're here for queer rights, but everybody's rights, not just our own. Yeah.